So what we do know is that delirium is um, very common um, in the palliative care setting and um, it has great impact on um, everyday care. You know, it affects patients' ability to communicate their wishes, um, you know, to make decisions about their care and um, also it affects whether they're able to tell the doctors whether they're experiencing any symptoms or not. And um, sometimes can be quite distressing as well because um, patients um, with delirium, they may become agitated and can be um, pulling on things, can be a safety risk. And also um, the loved ones um, sometimes will have um, sleepless nights in addition to the patient themselves. You know, this is a very um, significant issue for um, you know, patients, families, as well as um, those of us who are looking after these patients and families. And so we are kind of trying to see how can we manage delirium better. Because there recently has been um, a number of um, new studies, um, particularly on this topic. In palliative care, we haven't been maybe doing as many clinical trials before and thus um, there has been a lot of gaps in knowledge and um, we are practicing a lot of the times based on experience. So um, the purpose of our presentation is to really talk about some major trials that's been conducted recently and how they can be interpreted to help clinicians better look after patients who um, have delirium. You know, there are only three randomized controlled trials on um, how delirium can be managed in the palliative care setting. So putting the three trials in context then, I think now Breitbart studies say maybe don't use um, benzodiazepines. The Agar studies say, well, neuroleptics may not be useful at all and could even be harmful. I think our first study um, actually highlight that um, perhaps these medications are particularly useful in managing agitation. And right now we do have evidence to support that based on um, our study. Um, we, we actually don't have enough information um, to say that these medications can really be used to reverse delirium, for example. Or, and so I think um, if we have a very clear goal of what medications are useful for, we may be able to take advantage of them and um, ultimately be effective in managing those goals. Even though I just highlighted a lot of the studies on medications, I mean others have also looked at other ways of managing delirium. So we think of, um, you know, can we treat the underlying causes of delirium, such as, you know, infections, medications sometimes can tip the patients over to become delirious. Can we remove those things that um, could be contributing to delirium? The second aspect is some non-pharmacologic measures, um, such as helping patients be more oriented with hearing or visual aids, um, keeping them hydrated, helping them with ambulation, and this is what we call a multi-component intervention. And um, that has also been tested in randomized control trials in other settings um, and found to be useful in preventing delirium. So I think both of these strategies could be useful to perhaps reduce the incidence of delirium or even maybe help with um, some degree of reversibility. Importantly, you know, the side effect related to them is um, relatively low. So I think um, it is probably worthwhile to consider them, even though the multi-component interventions, you know, the studies that use them for the treatment of delirium instead of prevention of delirium, in the palliative care setting have so far been negative. Partly maybe because patients are very sick and it's very hard to know, um, you know, by the time that they become delirious, whether it is still possible to reverse them with some gentle, simple measures. But I think um, where medications come into play would be to, you know, treat agitation. You know, patients are very restless and agitated. You know, maybe they do have a role.